We are going to talk about decisions today and how so much of the time we struggle to make the right decision or more often than not, we struggle to make any real decision. When um, I was getting trained by some retired Navy SEALs, not in Navy SEAL stuff, more in life lessons, one of the things that they said to me was that there's no bad decision, there's only indecision. That's one of the principles that they live by. And really it makes sense, like in their world, because you're either making a decision to go someplace, even if it's wrong, than it is to not go any place because then you're going to get shot. That makes sense. In our daily lives, though, the stakes obviously aren't as high, yet we still have hundreds or thousands of decisions that we have to make every single day. And often we struggle to make the right ones primarily for two reasons. And I'm going to share those with you in this episode. But before I get to that, I've got to tell you how this lesson came to pass and what made me share it with you today, which is me totally getting owned by my 11-year-old when I was talking to her about her election coming up at school. So she wanted to be on the scholar council, which is like the student council, except they don't call them students at her school. They call them scholars, which I actually like. It sounds fancier. So I'm talking to her about this, and there's a bunch of people running in her class for this office. There were two offices and like six kids running. And I said, well, why don't you talk to your friends? that are running, tell them to vote for you and you'll vote for them in exchange. And she cut me off right there and she said, dad, I don't want to make any deals. I only want to go and make a decision after I hear their speeches to know who's actually going to be good for the school and help us out in the scholar council. Hopefully I'm going to be that one, but I want to vote for the right person. I'm thinking, well, one, if only everybody in America could think like that. And actually, if we had anybody good that we could get our support behind, nobody really wants that job. But two is that she had a really valuable lesson in that that I want to share with you today, which is don't make a decision until it's time to make a decision. Now, we make way too many decisions without any evidence to support them. Sometimes we'll make those decisions in advance. Sometimes we'll delay those decisions for so long that they become completely irrelevant and no longer really require a decision to be made. And we're usually blinded by one of two things, optimism or pessimism. So optimism is my primary kryptonite when it comes to making decisions before they should actually be made. Because as an entrepreneur, I like to see the opportunity in things, i.e. optimism. And I look at different things around me in my world and I think, man, I could make money off of that. Man, I could make money off of that. I could create an offer there. It's seeing opportunity in the marketplace without enough research to prove that what you're seeing is actually there. And we're going to get to figuring out how to see if what you think you see is actually there here in just a bit. But I'll give you an example of it first. And this is the failed apparel brand that I've talked about before. I thought I saw an opportunity in the market. I was very optimistic about this. I'd looked at some cursory data that was more high level and I had no idea or no way to verify if the information that I was looking at was real. Um, And as a result of that, my optimism had me make a decision too fast without any basis or evidence of support. It's the same kind of thing like when you believe somebody can do something for you and you're all excited about it because you want the thing done so bad that you make the decision even before you talk to them about the evidence of them doing it. See every ad agency I've ever hired because they all have these great ideas or these great stories of the people that they've all helped and none of them were able to help. So there's that. The second way that you get blinded by this is pessimism. And this is where I realize most people sit. Often we'll make a decision not to do something before we know enough about it. Now, we're usually tainted by our past experiences when we do that, of failure, um, or we are so pessimistic that we think we're going to be able to get something that somebody's telling us they're going to be able to offer us simply because of pessimism in that we've tried something like it before and it failed, we lost money, we felt stupid about it, like whatever it was. Now, what are we really talking about here? What we're talking about is the stories that we create in our own minds that help us either be optimistic or pessimistic about a decision that we need to make, blinding us to what we actually need to do to move forward. Where, what we have to do is we have to go to combat with our stories to make sure that we're not making decisions or not making any decision based on fantasy. We need to get to a place of reality. And there's a real simple little model that I use to figure out if what's going down in my mind is real 
and I should make a decision one way or I should make a decision the other way. And so it starts like this is what's the story I'm telling myself about this? And I'll use the apparel brand as an example uh, in this. And then I'll kind of walk through that with the rest of the model. So you can see how I would have thought it through having the benefit of hindsight, which I recognize we can see everything perfectly clearly in hindsight. So the story I was telling myself about the apparel brand was that there's a massive demand for this product. I, having no experience, can still build a global brand and become a billionaire inside of five years. That was really my story. That's what I thought was going to happen. I remember looking at like the founder of Lululemon and he was worth like $7 billion. And I was like, I could do that. That would be amazing. I could totally figure that out. That's what I was thought. That was my story in my head. The next question I ask myself is, is this story true? Now, had I asked myself this question when I came up with the story that I could create a global brand and be a billionaire within five years, I would probably have said yes, because that was the mindset I was in at the time. I would have said, oh, absolutely, that's true, until I would have gotten punched in the face by the next question. What evidence do I have to support that story as absolutely true? Now we're really trying to figure out if what we're saying is true. Before that, it's all based on emotions. But now we're looking for facts. We're looking for evidence. What's the evidence that that story was true? At the time, I would look at it and say, I really don't have any. I thought a lot of people were doing obstacle course racing, which is what the, uh, the apparel brand was designed for, like outdoor muddy ones. I didn't have any evidence really of that. Did I have any evidence that I could create a global brand? Well, if I looked at my work experience, no, because it'd been all professional services. So could I do that? Uh, I don't know. The evidence isn't there. Could I become a billionaire within five years? Well, let's take evidence of that. At the time, I didn't know anything about the product development. I didn't know anything about website development, which in all path was to do direct to consumer online. I didn't know anything about marketing. I didn't know anything about persuasion and selling techniques. I didn't know anything about the psychology of what happens to somebody's brain when they look at a web page and what needs to happen to make that as optimized as possible to get them to convert. I didn't know anything about email marketing. I didn't know anything about pixel retargeting. I didn't know about fulfillment. I didn't know how to ship it out. I didn't even know how to print a label. There was a lot of things that I didn't know. Had I examined that evidence, I might have made a different decision to go all in on that. But I'm not even done with the questions yet. Because the next question I asked myself is, well, what would happen if that story was false? So if the original story that I could create, there's massive demand for this product, I could create a global brand and become a billionaire within five years. What if that story is, po is false? Like, what's possible? Well, it's possible that all my assumptions are categorically wrong and this thing is just going to blow me up. I'm going to spend a whole ton of money on this and it's not going to take me really anywhere. I'm hardly going to get back what I put into it, if at all. Hmm. Well, that's exactly what happened. But I might have been able to see that had I asked myself that question in advance. Here's the thing. The truth always wins. It always wins. Like, it just does. And so if you can find the truth by asking yourself questions about the story, that's going to remove the blinders that you would otherwise get from either optimism or pessimism and allow you to make the right decision at the time the decision needs to be made. No more floating along in this nebulous should I or shouldn't I. Those are all based on stories. If you get yourself to the truth, you will make the right decision every single time and achieve your goals faster. And as always, do not forget that if you know somebody that needed to hear what I said today in this episode, then just share this video with them. It's a little share icon, text it to them. They'll be able to watch it. Don't keep it for yourself. Share it to the people that you know in your life that need to hear this message. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you on the next one.